So here we have a cheap DRO linear scale from eBay, purest Chinesium. This is a spare one I had from a, uh, a project I was working on. I have a another project coming up where I want to control the speed of my uh, lathe using the, the position of using the position of the cross slide and that will require me tapping into the signal that goes from the linear sensor to the DRO or that's already fitted to the lathe. So one of the things I wanted to do was identify the signals coming out of these units, look at the type of encoding that's used and how I might... Uh, int uh. So one of the things I wanted to do with, uh, with this unit here is to identify the types of signals that are being produced, look to see if I am able to capture that signal in some way and decode it, and then use that to make my own calculations as to the, the position of the sensor, independent of the, the existing DRO. This will allow me to then build a small unit that can then directly control the speed of the motor using the, uh, using the VFD. So the actual linear scale itself um, they come in various sizes. This one is a 700 millimeter one. However, some can be as short as 15 or 20 centimeters. Um, others weigh over a meter. However, fundamentally, they are all exactly the same, other than the the length of the actual scale itself, the the, the sensor, the optical sensor, and the the technology that it uses. They're all exactly the same. So, in in this case. The, where the yellow is here, that acts as a, a dust guard to stop debris and uh, other particles getting inside. Running along the length is a small glass strip and on, e on, the, on the... Running along the inside is a small glass strip and on it is etched a series of patterns, just bands going along. And as the sensor head moves past or moves across that glass, it reads the number of bands that it's passing and sends that to the DRO which is then able to calculate its position. So this particular unit is accurate to five nano... Um, five... This particular unit is accurate to five microns so 0 0.005 of a millimeter. I have a, um, I have a spare unit here, one that was damaged reasons and I thought I'd use this to give me an idea of what, how it's actually constructed, what the, the, the circuits inside are actually doing. Let me just zoom, zoom down here. I had a uh, damaged sensor and I thought I'd use this to um, dismantle and work out what, uh, what was going on inside. So I took the liberty of taking out the, the circuit there. The actual sensor unit itself slides along the, the body of the, of the scale and attached to that is a floating optical reader. So this is the part that actually sits on the glass scale. So the, the glass scale runs across where these little rollers are, runs through there. And on one side we have four little LEDs powered um, with the positive and negative there. So the light from the LEDs passes through the glass scale that runs through this gap here and it's detected on the other side by these four receiver units. So we have a, a, a common ground there and then we have the outputs from each one. So as, as the light passes through the scale and lands on each of these sensors depending on the amount of light that varies the, the voltage that comes out on each one of these lines. The, um, the board itself the, that does the interface is relatively simple. There is a, an IC which is a Texas Instruments LM339N for those that are interested. Um, capacitor, a couple of variable resistors on the underside, there's a whole series of surface mount resistors here. That's just to balance the balance the voltage, balance the current. And we have the input, 
that comes in on this side and two of the channels, channels A and B, come out there. The actual sensor, the inputs are channels A and channels B, those four inputs there. And then we have the feed that actually powers the LEDs there. So there's not much really in it. I took the, um, I took the liberty of drawing up the actual circuit just to go into a bit more detail. Here we see ground, which is the, the white, and we have positive, which is on the red one. And the outputs are the yellow and the black. So this is the feed to the, the actual optical part of the sensor. So we have ground and we have positive going to the LEDs. And then the inputs from the detectors come in on these four lines here. Now they come in on pairs. So we have channel A and we have channel B. So channel A comes through and it goes into this comparator here. So we have input negative, input positive, and the output from that comes out on output one, which goes to the black. Likewise, channel B on the yellow and the blue, they come in, take a slightly different route, goes into input two, negative and, nine, uh, negative and positive, and the output from that comes out on output two, which is on the yellow. The actual IC itself is a uh, low power, low voltage uh, quad comparator. Uh, I'll leave the a link to the data sheet in the uh, in the doobly doos. So now that we've identified the the pins on the on the cable by looking at the circuit, we're now able to power the unit up and to look at the signals that come out of it. So to do that, I've put together. Uh, a small cable here which provides uh, the power on the red and the white and it takes channels A and B out on the yellow and the black. I'm just powering it using a uh, an Arduino just to get the 5 volts. So let's power up the, uh, up the scope connect the channels in. So channel A can go to black. At the moment it doesn't matter about the polarity all we're interested in is the actual signals coming in or coming out from the from the sensor. And that's the other one. And then let's apply some juice. So as you can see as you slide the unit back and forth you see the signal generated by the sensor as a series of logical uh, logic level changes on channel A and channel B. We're now able to bring the signals into an Arduino and calculate the uh, relative position of the reader. I just wanted to take a few moments to talk about the core components of the linear encoder. Fundamentally it falls into the category of an incremental encoder and that is a device that, that works either in a linear fashion or in a rotary fashion and it has two output signals A and B and when measured together they produce information that can describe the direction of movement, movement and when movement occurs so th this is the Wikipedia page and it's quite, it goes into quite good detail so we have channels A and B coming out of the linear encoder. When I took the device apart before you saw that there were two channels when we had them on the oscilloscope you could see that the output was very similar to this with A and B. Depending on the state of the two channels A and B it's possible to determine one of four possible phases. So th this is based on the logic level of each channel. So for example when A is low and B is high that's phase two when both are high it's phase 3, when A is high and B is low it's phase 4 and when both are low it's phase 1. So by knowing the current state and the following state when an event is detected it's possible to A detect that motion has happened but also to work out if you're going forwards i.e. going from 1 to 2, 3 to 4 etc or going backwards 4 to 3, 2 to 1. The animation here is quite a good example. Obviously th this is for a rotary encoder. However, if you were to lay this horizontally along, it's the same pattern. And this illustration here shows quite well the two channels that I was describing earlier, where we have a light source, which is the LED in, in behind, 
and it passes through a filter and then through the glass scale that I talked about with the patterns etched on and then we have A and B which are the two detectors. So I'll just quickly go through the code for the Arduino that I wrote. This is version 1, this is the original one. So first of all we declare some variables pin A and pin B and then some states. Uh, we then configure the serial port, configure the input ports for pin A and pin B. We then attach an interrupt to those pins and when the state of that pin changes it calls the trigger function. We then enter the loop and inside each loop if the value has been updated we then print to serial the value of the counter. So we've got these two triggers configured here and this is the function that's called. So the first thing we do is load the state for pin A and pin B. We then perform a little bit of logic on them to work out what phase they're in and based on the phase we adjust the counter so in this case we're going uh, we're decreasing the counter by one in this one we're increasing it and likewise decreasing it increasing it. We're then replacing the old value with the new value and we're setting updated to true which means that when the loop lands here again it will then print out the value reset and we start again. Okay so now we're happy with the signaling that's coming out we've got an Arduino we've got a script written let's uh, connect it up and see what we get. The system's fired up, however no movement has been detected so there's nothing to send on the serial port. However as soon as we make a change in direction you can see the value changes. As we go to the left we're climbing in value, as we go to the right we're descending. So obviously the, the numbers that it's displaying change rapidly because the resolution of this reader is 5, five microns. Okay, this is version 2 of the Arduino script. Um, it performs exactly the same functionality as version 1. However, version 1 had some ugly code where it was trying to calculate the phase. So in this one I've opted to use a lookup table which takes the status of channels A and B and looks up the corresponding adjustment for the phase. So you can see it says if it's a zero there's there's no adjustment or we have we have a, a minus one or or a plus one here. The rest of the functionality is exactly the same, apart from inside the trigger function where the the ugly if blocks have been removed. Using bit shift operators, we're calculating the phase value and then we're applying that to the counter. So this is um, version two of the script. Functionality wise it's exactly the same, however just to prove a point we will upload it and run a test. Same functionality as before, so as the sensor starts to move it triggers events which in turn causes the counter to count up and to count down. Version 3 of the Arduino code includes the ability to drive the 7 segment LED display. This requires the use of the LED control library. It also includes a function that renders out the digits on, on the display. Other than that the functionality of the script is identical. Okay and finally we will add the LED display.
And there we go. If you found this video interesting, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.